Hi there, it's Wendy Hernandez with Command the Courtroom. And in this week's video, I want to talk with you about over-communicating when you share custody or parenting time with another parent. One of the trials I just finished involved allegations by a father that my client was um, kind of stalker-like and that she harassed him and that she over-communicated with him and he sought to have the judge limit the amount of communication that he and the other parent were having. Um, he wanted exchanges never to be in person. He wanted emails and text messages to be limited to no more than a certain number per week unless the child was sick. He really wanted nothing to do with my client, the mother. And the hard thing about that is, is, is when two people share a child in common, it's not really ideal to cut off all communication because you have a kid who needs parents to talk to each other and who needs parents to um, understand what's going on with the child when, when the child is with dad and when the child is with mom. And this avoids problems in the future as, as the child gets older and is maybe trying to manipulate one party or the other. So in a co-parenting relationship, no communication is not the ideal solution when parties are at each other's throats. But in reviewing the potential evidence for my case that my client provided me with, and not my case, but it was my client's case, I saw tons and tons of email strings. Um, sometimes the email strings on one topic would go on for days, and there would be 15 or more email exchanges between my client and the father about swapping one day or something like that. And what I saw from those emails is that maybe the father's concerns were actually real um, a lot of, in a lot of the cases that I handle people make stuff up or they have a skewed perception of the way the facts appear to other people but in this situation there was probably more communication than, the, than there needed to be and I think really what it boiled down to was my client feeling afraid my client was afraid about what was going on with her daughter when the daughter was with her dad and and in this situation there were no um, major issues. There were no significant mental health issues or substance abuse issues or domestic violence issues. It was just a situation where there were two parents who were both fit, um, who were both good parents, but there was a lot of bad blood and a loss of trust that had happened way in the past. And my client just, you know, she was a type A personality. She was a high level professional, or she is and she had a hard time letting go. And I understand that as a professional and as a type A personality, sometimes you have to let go of control. So as you go through your custody or family law case, uh, just be mindful of how you're communicating with the other parent and how often you're communicating. Is the communication too much? Is it not enough? Are you responding to communication? Is your communication, could it be considered harassing? And in the communication that you're having with the other parents, are you communicating with respect? Are you trying to under, to understand the other parent's um, position on things? Are you being rude? Are you being demeaning? Are you being condescending? Are you making demands? Really look at that because I guarantee this, if you end up in trial someday, the, the text messages and the email messages that you and the other party have exchanged are probably going to end up as exhibit A, B, C, D, E, F, G and on and on. And you want to make sure that you're not the one that looks bad in those communication, your communications. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're the one who looks reasonable in those communications. You're going to want to make sure you're the one who is treating the other parent with respect, whether or not you feel they deserve it or not. So in your communications, really look at them. Think twice before you hit the send button and um, withhold sometimes the things that you really want to say don't attack the other parent um, maybe you can um, share your criticism of their behavior but don't make it personal or about them so communicate well communicate kindly and give up the need to constantly control because we all know you can't control another person and another person is not going to change the way they are just because you're telling them to the other parent is who they are and they will only change if they make the decision that they want to so i hope you found this 
video helpful if you haven't already subscribe to the command the courtroom youtube channel like us on facebook if you like this video give it a thumbs up send me a question if you have any uh, topics that you'd like me to address in future videos and until next week remember to keep on trucking and command the courtroom